everybody, um, welcome. Uh, those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Rake. I'm Francois' cousin. Um, I had a chat to Emma earlier. Um, I thought maybe because of the family and all that, I will, because I'm German, I'll speak in a folk tongue. So I'll probably be Afrikaans, be Engels. So those who don't understand Afrikaans, please be patient. But anyway. Um, yeah, I, we, earlier we sent Francois away, um, so we all said a few things. So I've said quite a few of the things that I wanted to say anyway, but um, I think just on behalf of the family, the Melts, the Eustas, the Roos, the, the sort of cousins, um, I thought I would just share one or two things with you, with Francois. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I remember him as a very cheeky young boy, uh, much younger than we were. My brother and I used to go to the Karoo, and go and play with him at Noblesfontein and he would be there eagerly waiting for us, the guys from the city, from the big town to come and play with him. And um, sometimes we were quite naughty, we would make him not play with us, we would confine him to his stoop, he, wouldn't, he wasn't allowed with the stoop. And then he would go and talk to his mother and then he would go and talk to Willie, who was his little playmate. And then Willie and myself and Auntie would go into the mountains to go and look for porcupines, etc. and dassies and all that. Um, but he was always um, tenacious. He never backed down, and whenever we joked with him, he was always there for more, whether it was punishment or congratulations. Um, and then, you know, we all grew up, and then years later, one day he arrived at my front door, at Kim and I, we had just moved to Stellenbosch, and he arrived there with a, a really stuffed up old Land Rover. And, um, and he came and told us his new ideas of water, and he'd just found this beautiful girl from New Zealand, slash Scottish, <laughs> and, um, and he was so excited, and I sort of looked at this and wondered, thought, yeah, you know what, I've got a career, I studied medicine, I know where I'm going, and this guy was out in the wind, no pun intended. <laughs> and he just came back one day with this idea, and um, I sort of thought, where are you coming from? You know, and then, anyway, he pulled it off against all odds, I mean, he was definitely, in my mind, a visionary, a maverick, um, and a very, in his own way, a spiritual guy. You know, he always used to talk about, you guys probably all heard it so many times, but he always spoke about the hubris, about the self-confidence, and how, how you can be confident, but you mustn't be overconfident. Don't wear that confidence too much on your sleeve. Always be kind to your people, and the investment that he's done in Victoria West, the community and the people. It's a living example to see what is here today and what he's achieved. And the fact that we're sending him off today, there are two things. The one is, he fought COVID, he breezed through it last year. He, I had my daughter here in confinement with him because she was part of the team. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. <laughs> and, um, and he cruised through that, you know, and then Today we celebrate his birthday as well, you know, on such a bizarre day. And um, I remember one night we had a long chat and, you know, we, we came both to the conclusion we were all born naked. And that's how we go home, you know. So whatever spiritual mind you want to be in, but he's, having seen him here through all the pressure, and he picked by far the most aggressive cancer that anybody could choose to pick. I mean, nobody can survive that. And he did his best. He was positive, and until the last day that I spoke to him, he was, he was looking forward. So, and the pressure and the strain that he had at the end, I think we all know that he's at a far better place right now, and, and he's happy, and I think his family, we all will look after them, and in spirit, and Emma, Kwasi, Rupiru, Jack, um, thank you for giving him to us for the time that we had him. And his memory will stay with us forever. And we will drink a toast to his life, no doubt. Um, what we wanted to do was, I think that uh, JP and Hat wanted to say a few words. Theo, sorry, Theo, his brother's JP, who used to work with me in a liquor store across the road. <laughs> so Theo, they all the Polvalk connections, so, so Theo and Hat want to say a few words. And then it's a toss-up whether Gus wants to say something then, or the family would like to say. So I will leave it over. Theo, please, thank you. Thank you, Ray. Goedemorgen. Ek ken vir, vir Pietie, soos ons Pietie leer ken het, van hierdie daai waar sy, sy foto is. Ons is sy, sy palspringvriende van 40 jaar gelede. 
um, wat hom geken het, anders te, as wat jylle hom geken het, ons is allemaal jong, en ons het allemaal een jong leven achter ons gehad, ek het Pieter ontmoet in 1980 op een SA kampioenskap in Jimmiston, <coughs> Ons was sikker maar allemaal klein, maar ek onthou Pieter is een klein sienkie met die, met die draaikies op sy tanden. Um, <coughs> Daar vandaan is ons weg, deelgeneem weg en ek is Stellenbosch Universiteit toe en ek word saam met hom ingedeel by um, universiteitskoshuis, saam op die vloer, saam Paul gespring. Ek onthou nog goed in my eerste jaar en die eerste jaar, ek was eerste jaar en hy tweede jaar omdat ek eerst militaire toe is en hulle het ons in die boksgevecht gesit en ek trek vir Pieter vir een um, <coughs> boksgevecht en ek denk in die tweede auto slaan ek om uit. Uh, uh, hou op die maag en um, ja, vandaar het ons saam atletiek gedoen en ek kom van die vrystaat af en ek het nie geweet wat een pedalski in my leven is nie, ek meen ons het nie water in die vrystaat nie en ek onthou baie goed die eerste week het, het, het Pieter my kom haal in die kamer, hy sê kom <coughs> ons is in sy opel kadet, dan stel hem ons die hoofstraat af, stop by die eerste sportwinkel en hy koop vir my een pedalski of ek moest betaal, ons koop die pedalski, pedalski op die dak En so het ons baie naweke, want hou ook baie goed. Pat Benetar, Ultravox, Cadbury chocolade, hulnat, in die baie broek, borde op die dak, en nou gaan ons cool baie toe. Het ek Pieter leer ken. Daar het ons atletiek gedoen, um, vir baie jare, ons was, van ons atlete was hier, ons was een groep van acht, um, wat saam geoefend het, wil kan dink, daar is baie competitie onder geweest, Pieter was een man wat gehoud van competitie. Hy het gehou van die uitdaging. Um, hy was committed. Paal spring in atletiek was Pieter sy droom. Um, hy het gegaan daarvoor. En um, ons was in een groep, en hy was so half my, my pa gewees, omdat hy so committed was. Um, in al my jare, wat ek Pieter gekend het op universiteit, het hy nooit een druppeldrank gedrink. Niks, nie een bier nie, nie wijn nie. En ons manne was bykie um, anders te gewees. En dan as ek by die baan kom, mevrouw Pieter, heeft my, jy gedrink gestrand. Um, jy gaan nie voorder nie, jy gaan nergens kom nie. En um, ja, hy, hy was heel waarschijnlijk recht gewees. Um, daar het ons baie lekker jare gehad op universiteit, baie goed gegaan, Pieter is toe daar weg, sy paat om kom haal, na een jaar of twee is het saam chemie geloop, en, en Pieter in die academie, hy was te bezig gaan voor. Toe toe mannetjies om kom haal, na so twee jaar en gesê, Pieter, nou gee jy vloot toe en toe is Pieter vloot toe, en ons paai het geskui, en in 1991, vier jaar later, toe gaan toerek en my vrou in, in Duitsland, en ek loop in die hoofstraat van Mengen, en ek loop in Pieter vast, so, daar, en hy nooi ons uit die aand vir een vliek, en ons gaan vliek saam met Emma en, en Pieter en, 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 en Mengen, en een dag of twee, en ek is weg, 19 jaar later, Toe kom ek vir die wereldbeker, toe is ek afgetrek stel in Boston, kom af vir die wereldbeker in Sokker, ek loop in Kaapstad in die Hoofstraat, en ek loop recht uit in Pieter vas. 19 jaar later, en daar het ons vriendskap weer opgetel. Um, ons is vandaar af, het ons een paar keer, ons is hier vir Pieter sy, sy, um, sy verjaarsdag geweest, sy 50ste verjaarsdag, ek is a, a school of by school in stel in Bos, Pieter het, a, het a groot bijdrage gelever, ons het van sy kinders gehad van Victoria West, wat ons in die koosheids gesit het, wat so dier met triek het, en uh, meisies wat, wat vandag op universiteit is, waarvoor Pieter altijd een baie goeie en een baie sachte hart gehad. Hy het my altijd gebel en gevra, hoe gaan het my kinders in die school? En um, ek het Pieter leer ken, ek en my vrou as, as een familieman. <coughs> Iemand wat omgegeerd die liefde het hem uitgestraald. Sy belangstelling in sy kinders was ongelooflik. As ek met Pieter gepraat het, het het my altijd vertel van sy kinders. And always about his lovely wife. Um, hy was baie trots haar weer opgewees en... Um, Ja, so dit was vir ons een groot voorrecht. Um, Pieter het ek leer ken as een Afrikaanse seen uit die karo uit. En dit is soos ek om sal onthou. Van ons kant af, baie sterk in die familie, om mannetjes en sy vrou. Um, ons sal vir Pieter altyd onthou. Ons atletiek gemeenskap het een baie, baie sachte plek vir hom. Baie, baie dankie. Thank you, Theo. So, essentieel, uh, um, het ek vir Pieter ontmoet nou, Eerste keer in Bloefontein toe is het onder, het het onder 17 toe so mannetjies daar en hierdie om die draaikies en, en ek kan sien hierdie ookie staan uit. Weet, dat, dat is van hom gewees, die X-factor was daar gewees, alle jare. En ons het oor die jare het ons competities gehad en swan en, en jy weet stories gehad van hy het ou Louise Paul bykie korter gesaag, want hy is so competitive gewees, want het was altyd, die, die competitie was altyd hoog daar gewees. En tot vannacht, jy weet ons nie wat die, wat die uitstuysel was nie. 
Maar, uh, en, en, en toe het ons aangaan in ons levens, en ek was baie trots om te weet, en Pietie het baie teleerstellings, uh, uh, in paaspring, het ons allemaal geleerd van teleerstellings. En ek was trots gewees om te sien, hy het iets extra rekord gebreek. Hy het toe spramok geraak, en, en hy, hy weet, hy moet altijd sy paas, sy voetspore, en sy legende moet sê, altyd nie skare wil lewe, en ek het gewonder, what's gonna happen with him? En vracht hy, so daar kom hy uit, en hy became himself. En hy became his true identity. En ek is trots om nou, En toe het ons nou vir 20 jaar het ek nie gesien, en toe sien ek om die enig was, Jack, Jack, there you are, and, and Jack speels golf, en ek sien vir Piet, en ek sê, Piet, hoe gaan het? Hy sê, uh, Gert, ja, het gaan goed. En toe vertel hem die story van bezigheid, van hoe dit gegaan het, hoe zwaar het was op die plaas, en van die, van die water, en hoe dit met die winterbien is, en die hele proces, en hy het altyd gepraat van next level. You must always think next level, Gert, you, you know what, you guys, up around the farm meters, Next level. Ons ook is hier rondgepoet en met 5 meter uit gesê, nee, guys, 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 you must think next level. En ek weet, dit is wat ek, dit is wat ek vir hom ontdou, en ek denk, that's what we, we, we need to take from Pity's life, is, is, you know, was he perfect? No one is perfect, but he was a next level guy. He always think of possibilities, living the art of possibilities. Wisdom. And, and, and I think there was always this, this soft heart about him. He was always, he had, he had time for people. Um, uh, so yeah, to, to pity and, and let, you know, like, and I really love what you've put on that, uh, the little poem. Mm. It was fantastic. And I, I really see, I really see a lot of pity. And there's one thing I see there, was gaan vlieg. And I think he's flying. Thank you. Oh, tough to be standing in front of all of uh, Pity's friends and family. We're all close to him in our way, others, we wouldn't be here. Um, I've been asked to come and just regale a few, tell a few things about what I felt about him and do feel. Uh, we met originally at the uh, university at Stellenbosch, uh, where he went out with a girl who was uh, in the same digs as I had my girlfriend, so we got to know each other. Not, not best of mates. Um, and then... Throughout life, I, I perhaps caught up with him again after the army and after studies, and uh, he was the big uh, uh, rugby guy from the Clifton Knoppe down at uh, Clifton Beach, and uh, he'd be playing there with a lot of the Springboks. You've just heard he is a Springbok in his own right, uh, but he would be playing there with all these younger guys, and, and very often they were, they were 20 years younger than him, and he was still good enough to be in this team, yeah? This was your dad. It was an amazing story, you know, 20 years younger, and he was in the same team, and the competition was huge, and, and nothing like playing on the beach, you know? um, As Rosie said, and as he said himself, only, only at Easter, he's a bit of a, he was, and is a bit of a, a one percenter, he called himself. So he was always fighting upstream, as Gert perhaps alluded to a bit. He was always he wanted the next level, but he was, was always upstream about life. It was, um, I'm going to go and do this. Everybody thinks that, but I'm doing this. And boy, did he do so many different things. Um, from starting the water company, didn't always go well. Uh, he built a winery, a magnificent winery. What do the two have in common? Not a lot. <laughs> um, we see all these windmills around here, and our nobles from I mean, it literally was a pioneer in this country, and the biggest thing in our news at the moment is about our environment. He literally walked hand in hand with the, with the guys who were writing the, the, the policies for the parliament um, to get his, in the end of the day, one of the first uh, IPPs, or independent power producing licenses to be able to make his wind energy. And today, the firm is, is, is of the biggest out there in a, in, a, in a huge need for this country. Now, what did that have to do with building wineries or, <laughs> or water companies? Um, he, he, he just was an amazing, amazing individual. He was great with my family. Um, he always looked after our son and daughter like their parents, and my son alluded to that this morning. Um, and, and I mentioned something that was... was, was um, very pertinent, I thought. Often in life we have a partner, a friend, and uh, you don't need to, to argue with them or fight with them. or You just know they're your partner. 
and, and this guy and I had a, an, an amazing call it chemistry. And uh, we could be in a room together. You don't need to say a word, but we knew it, what each other was thinking. Um, and uh, just, just such an amazing, amazing friend. So uh, thank you for, for letting me say a few words. We love you all, and we're here to support you. Yeah? Thank you. It's been a crazy three months. Um, but I know today that he um, would want us all to celebrate him and talk about him <laughs> and have an entire day just to him. <laughs> um, <laughs> you never say that, but he does. All right, thank you. All right. Dear Dad, how does one to begin to squeeze a lifetime of memories into one speech? To remember you and celebrate your life, we need to look at three things. Love, focus, and lightning. <laughs> Monday morning, Dad starts typing to Trek Walker. <laughs> morning all, we miss you. Even Rosie made an appearance on Sunday night. <laughs> Good to see you all in a positive spin. We are nearing the end of this COVID thing, so stay tight and do not let it go to waste. Too much life throwing, flowing through my veins, not going to waste. Have a great week, bookies. Love. My dad was someone who felt extreme empathy, whether it was his love for his family or the strong pull he had to giving back to the communities in which he learned from, he would do it with such love. The one thing that I am certain of is how much he loved his children and my mother. Their bond is something that one looks for you both have set such high expectations, and all I know is that I need to find my best friend. <laughs> to Quaz, Dad was your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> Let Quaz be, she is who she is. <laughs> 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 he loved your enthusiasm and your strength and your thought processes. He is so proud of everything that you have achieved. He loved your soul and your being. Your connection will last forever. To Jack, oh, but he loved having a son. <laughs> <laughs> you were his little Charney. He would stay up until four in the morning, pacing up and down the halls just to see how your hole went. <laughs> to Dad, I promise to love what I do and love every moment that life gives me. I promise to find someone who loves me the way that you loved Mum, with an expectation of a coffee in bed every morning and afternoon checkups. <laughs> Cue his whistling. <laughs> I will love you to the moon, round the stars, and back down to the other planets, and back down to Earth. The next word is focus. Whether this be on the netball court, the water polo pool, or with my studies, Dad would always say, focus, Rosie. Or whether it would be me and my friends going out for one drink, <laughs> he would always say, Rosie, focus. <laughs> Cue the eye glare. Dad, you put so much focus into building a life for us. The amount of dedication and passion you have shown me has inspired me throughout my life. I cannot even begin to fathom how you kept us all happy whilst trying to create your beautiful wind farm. It's time for us to focus. Focus on our life that you have so generously create, uh, produced a platform for and how you've prepared us for the challenges that life might throw at us. Following that, lightning. When you walked into the room, it was like, bam. <laughs> what a soul you were, and I definitely be believe that energy cannot just go. You are in the trees, in the rain, Ooh. and the snow. Energy is the capacity of doing work and is a process of one body to another and is never lost. You have worked and sometimes created friction. However, there's a bang and something magical is created. I will always see you in everything. You have never left me before you were in my heart. You have made a world for us to live in where our hearts can be open, our minds can be explored, and our energy can be transformed. I will be sure to read your fountainhead and live with love, focus, and explosive energy. May you rest so peacefully, peacefully you strong and brave soul. Thank you. <laughs> You'll see. Okay. Oh, I'm going to read from my notes, so I'm not looking at my phone. Mom. 
Not the pen. Look, I'm reading. <coughs> Oh gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to read this. <clears throat> okay, <sighs> to my dad a key. <clears throat> <clears throat> this last December I spent at home, I started watching a program on Netflix called Tapini Funerals. It's a series about Maori-owned funeral business that shares intimate happenings after someone passes away. From when choosing the person's ceremony arrangements, what clothes they will wear, what coffin they will go in, and what kind of ceremony the family want. It gave me a sense of comfort despite the fact that the person was no longer alive. In Maori culture, the deceased will spend up to a week in the family home, surrounded by relatives. It's a last goodbye. And yesterday we were so lucky to have our dad spend um, his last night at home with us. And um, it was really peaceful and lovely. And at first I was scared about it. I, I didn't know how to feel about it, but it was one of the best things that we actually could have done as a family together. <laughs> it's comforting to know that your energy has now been transferred to something else. <laughs> In the mornings you would drive us to school. The bus is leaving, <laughs> he would say. <laughs> I would roll out of bed as the bus was about to leave and would hop into a car that was always 18 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Even in the winter, you've got to climatize. <laughs> you were so structured and routined, but we listened to 5FM when, when most other parents were listening to KXM. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> you, will for, you will always be the morning time to me. You would always get up early and be so positive and get the day going. A real asset to my life and how many mornings and how my mornings go now. I do not wake up grumpily because of you and mum and the way a new day and, and the way you taught us that a new day would start and bring positivity and new opportunities. <sighs> um, I wrote this to my dad on the 27th of May this year when he had first been admitted to ICU. <laughs> I keep reminiscing about the time you took me to my first rugby match at Newland Stadium. <laughs> I remember my spur backpack. <laughs> And then I had spilled orange juice in it, and it gave off a pungent smell. <laughs> Newlands is now taking on a new form, which will see people create new memories. All around Cape Town, I have fond memories of life on earth, on this earth, as with you as my father. Even the trivial arguments of growing up, because you have taught me so much, and I have learned how to be human. I can't wait to hug you. You are a fundamental part of our family. You never missed a sporting event. You were always there cheering us on, and you were so interested, even when we didn't know why we should be. <laughs> you cared so deeply about our well-being, health, and happiness. You always made things happen because you loved us. I never felt unloved, uncared for, or undervalued. You placed value and importance on each of us. <laughs> Uh, when I was about 15, he used to build this ship and he, we were in a bit of a financial rut and he would sit there every night and he would build the ship. And it's in his, his office now, but that, build, that ship sing, signifies the focus and the continuing. He would just get up and he'd build it. He wouldn't complain. He just build it and we'd walk past him and he'd be building it and he was so like focused on the ship. I'm so especially grateful for the times I spent with you in my 20s. Every time myself and a few mates would come back from university, you would greet us at the door and say, but you must focus. <laughs> Very confused, we'd say, okay. <laughs> a lot of learning curves and my sense of rationale. You put a lot of time into me when I could have easily got lost. When I moved to London, you were constantly on the phone to me every morning. Job yet? You got a job yet? <laughs> job yet? <laughs> And every time it was a no, you said, it's okay, we begin again tomorrow until, until I actually did get my first permanent job. And I remember you call, calling you, and we were both crying. I know you were proud of me, and I could feel that. I never felt like you weren't. All through my life, you made me feel so special because your soul was so special and radiated authenticity and so much love. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, I'm just quite nervous right now, I mean, it's all been quite a shock and, yeah, um, 
to my dad, the French architect. <laughs> uh, one of the first memories I could remember was waking up for school uh, to a very energetic dad, ready to start the day, screaming, the bus is leaving. <laughs> Uh, this, of course, meant that he was the bus and we, he would leave without you. And I, I, and I remember when we were on the way to school and we would take the Constantia Neck Road. Um, and on that road, you can see Klein Constantia and um, the wine cellar. And every single time we would pass that cellar, he would say, who, would build the, who, who built that? And then every time we passed that wine cellar, he would say that every single time. <laughs> Um, a memory I could never forget would be the infamous boys trip where about 12 of us would go on a dads and lads trip to the Karoo and our farm. Um, stops include the N1 Vimpy, emergency toilet breaks and Ronnie's sex shop. I was five everyone. Um, these are the times uh, uh, <laughs> These are the times where the parents told us to go catch scorpions in the felt and see who got the biggest one. Um, I also remember uh, making uh, caddies out of a branch and a rubber from the tire. Uh, my dad loved the saying, a boer maka plan. Uh, and other activities on the farm included um, camping out on the riverbed, uh, climbing up the big hill outside the house, and dad's being too hungover the next morning to do anything. Um, the farm was a very special place to my dad and for all of us. My dad was always there for me, supporting me through every endeavor. It was the first, <laughs> it was my first rugby game when you would be at every single match and be shouting on the sidelines, cheering me on. But as I grew up, <laughs> others grew up faster. <laughs> and <laughs> rugby was not the sport for me then. <laughs> so I, I decided to follow in his footsteps and uh, take on the pole. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that sounded wrong. <laughs> Uh, so I decided to, uh, to follow the footsteps of my father by taking on pole vaulting. But unfortunately, this venture was short-lived and then uh, quickly taken over by golf, where my dad, again, supported me 100%. He always believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. He was very... <laughs> he was really my number one fan. He would follow my golf games hole by hole, even when <laughs> I was on the completely different time zone. <laughs> And he would, sorry, he would call me straight after every golf game without me knowing he was following each hole online from the other side of the world. He would call me and make me uh, always go through every hole shot by shot. And then he would tell me about his round earlier that day. <laughs> um, uh, I, was, I was very privileged to have a dad that was so kind and so supportive and who gave my family such a great platform to work from. Now, I'm going to miss the, <laughs> I'm going to miss the course straight after my golf games. I'm going to miss watching rugby games with you. I'm gonna watch, <laughs> I'm gonna miss the long messages you sent to the group chat every week. I'm going to miss your faint whistling in the distance to know that you were close. <sighs> Uh. <laughs> okay. So everybody has um, their own love story. My amazing adventure started when I was 19 years old. I was out with my friends in Munich in Germany and I spotted the most handsome man on the other side of the room. <laughs> After asking everyone in my group if they knew him and assessing that he was, in fact, not a serial killer, I thought I would cruise on by for a closer look. As I walked past, looking the opposite direction, of course, no eye contact, um, I felt him take my hand. 
um, as I was walking. It was warm and it was soft and it didn't let go. Hello, he said. What's your name? <laughs> I am Francois Roux, he said. We talked for a little and he told me he was a French architect student from Paris. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> We danced and we kissed and we ended up in his tiny apartment. I left when it was dark without saying goodbye and was on a plane for the next couple, uh, for the next, uh, um, was an on a plane within the next couple of hours for a trip that was to last for three weeks. We never, of course, had cell phones or social media back in the day. If you wanted to find someone, you needed to get out and find that person. He found me. He left messages for me with my friends, um, who then told me there was a South African guy looking for you, Emma. <laughs> to which I would reply, I don't know any South African guys. <laughs> but there was, and there is, this incredibly gorgeous French man out there somewhere. <laughs> And as the universe had already decided, the following week my friend Rachel was in town and after supper we needed to get something from her apartment. And as we entered the lobby, I said, oh, I know this place, I've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> and as we got out of the elevator on her floor, we walked past Francois's door. I said to Rachel, this is his door, and of course, being 19, she immediately knocked on the door and ran off, leaving me standing there. As Francois opened the door, as Francois opened it, fresh out of the shower, dripping with water with a towel around his waist, <laughs> mm. Mm. he took my hand and has not let go of it since then. That was February 1991. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, we travelled the world and we lived in different cities together and he just took in everything. He enjoyed and engaged in everything and all the cultures and new experiences that he could. Our little Kwasi was born in New Zealand and after a couple of years more working and travelling, Francois decided that he needed to come back to South Africa, to the home that he loved so much that gave him security and peace, Nobles Fontaine. Immediately, his brain started to work on ways in which he could diversify and make a difference. The spring water at Noblesfontein, which came from an aquifer deep in the ground, was of supreme quality. And, <laughs> and as a child, he had filled water to take to school to give to his teachers. Francois thought that he would bottle this mineral water at Noblesfontein and send it all around South Africa to sell. This he named Karoo Mineral Water. Um, after designing a glass bottle with a somewhat Eastern Bloc looking label, um, which he thought looked rather cool, uh, was swiftly replaced with a much more chic PET bottle and a new foil label. Um, Back in, back in 1997, there was a small handful of people bottling water. We loaded trucks and he would drive all night and offload the next day and then drive the 600 kilometres back to Noblesfontein. Francois worked so hard and, cre and created an incredible brand. Together with a couple of others, he initiated an NGO to um, uplift the farm workers of the area through sport. Um, they frequently organised soccer matches and sports days. Rosie was then born in New Zealand, and on returning to South Africa, Kwasi attended a small play school in Victoria West Town for a couple of days a week. <laughs> Kwasi ca uh, Francois came home from town one day after picking her up um, and said, we're packing the delivery truck and we're moving to Cape Town. <laughs> Kwasi needs to go to big school now. <laughs> Francois was fearless. We found a small house in Hegevale, and Kwasi started school, and this was the next chapter um, and the next chapter of our life in Cape Town began. On Christmas Eve 2001, Francois handed me the most beautiful baby boy ever born, Jack. <laughs> and almost immediately after Jack was born, we moved to the leafy suburbs of Constantia, where Francois reasoned, we are moving here because it's the closest you'll get to New Zealand <laughs> with all of these trees. <laughs> Karoo mineral water passed into different hands and Francois needed a job. He embarked on some building projects here and there and was given a chance to tender to build Constantia Glen's new wine cellar. He jumped at the chance and was awarded the tender and built along with Simon and Tembi and his guys the most beautiful wine cellar in Constantia, Constantia Glen. New Year's morning 2007, <laughs> Francois woke up and said, Ems, 
renewable energy is the way forward. <laughs> we have to save this planet. Um, and wouldn't it be great if we could put some of those enormous wind turbines up and generate electricity at Noblesfontein? So probably within the month, he had found out about a course in Denmark and a conference in Dubai and a sustainable energy to run on renewable, uh, sorry, a sustainable city to run on renewable energy in the planning in Abu Dhabi. And, 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 and. He spent six months or so researching and formulating plans on how to do this. In 2008, Francois formed South African Renewable Green Energy, SARGE. He started identifying possible areas to monitor wind and put up many wind masts to try and find the best yields in the country. In 2011, he entered into a group venture with Gestump Wind Spain and the Shinduka Group. Together, they submitted a bid to the first round for the independent power producers of South Africa to supply electricity to the main grid with a renewable energy wind farm. They won their bid and his dream to put up 41 turbines producing 73.8 megawatts of power on Noblesfontein was realised. Three years ago, Francois bought out Gestump wind shares, which makes his company the only fully South African owned wind farm in the country. Again, fearless. Sarge and Noblesfontein contribute, contribute co sorry, Sarge and Noblesfontein contributes considerably back to the local Victoria West community, be it through teacher training programs, fitting solar panels on roofs of schools in Victoria West, or his dearest project, the seven scholars and graduate students that they fund from Victoria West District with the direction of the MAD Foundation. Francois would ask me, Ems, why do you like me so much? <laughs> I would always say, I love everything about you, but I especially love your energy. I have never met anyone with such an incredible will to succeed at whatever he might set his mind to. Francois was an, was an engaging, interested and fabulously fun dad. He took the children to school every morning so that he could chat to them and would shout out from the doorway, again I'm saying this, God, at 6.45 a.m., the bus is leaving, <laughs> at to which the scramble for the school bags, sports kits and lunches would ensue. He attended every sports day, hockey, netball, water polo, cricket, rugby matches, dance shows, rowing regattas, <laughs> music workshops, there was an endless list of things to attend. He was overwhelmingly supportive in what we all wanted to do. I can hear him saying, yes, choirs, do it. Or, great, Rosie, just tell me what you need. Or, you've got it, Jack. Again, just focus. Mm -hmm. We had amazing family holidays, road trips, long family Sunday lunches, and many sundowners on the beach. Francois, I thank you for our incredible children, for teaching them to be kind, by example, for giving them the best platform on which to move forward with their lives. I thank you for all the adventures that we've had together, for believing in me, for loving me, and for always holding my hand. The Gaelic word amankara means a person from which you can share your deepest thoughts, feelings, and dreams with, your soul friends. Francois was my anamkara. Until we meet again, my darling. Mm. Mm. absolutely shattered by the sad news. We wish we could just take an airplane and fly down to you guys and give you a warm hug, but obviously that's not possible. So Rosie asked us to do a little video in memory of Francois and you asked us to wear bright colors. So it's very early here in the morning. So we just tried to pick something colorful from the cupboard. We're completely with you and we're very sad. And I think all three of us together share one thing, and that's we totally admire Francois. He was a great person. He was a very inspiring person. And actually every moment he walked through the hotel lobby and I looked into his eyes after a brilliant powder run, he just made me want to run out as well. He just reflected that joy of being out there in nature, but also of being with other people and among other people. And that was just fantastic. We all had the joy of spending one ski day with you all last January, which I suppose will be for us all the last whole day we spent with him. And I think we will cherish those memories forever. The sad thing is that we were planning our trip to South Africa, 
which we never made, unfortunately, because this virus came upon us and we just didn't make it. Also, I spoke to Francois, I think, until June last year and we didn't let go of the idea. But in June 2020, it was clear it was not possible. So we hope to come soon and spend that time with you. And I think now maybe Pauline, would you like to? <laughs> Hi, I'm a quasi Rosie Jack. Hi, our hearts are completely with you during this time. We're so sad. We're so sad for you. We're so sad for the world to lose Francois. Um, who's just such a wonderful person, just one of the kindest, most loveliest people that you could ever meet. And when you met him, you felt like you knew him your whole life. He's going to be so missed, so missed by everybody. And he'll always be with us. All right. Okay. All okay. the best. Sending you all our love here, guys. All our yeah. Love. Big hugs. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hello. For those who don't know me, my name is Shala and I am Francette's daughter. Um, before I start, Emma, Quasi, Rosie, Jack, Oma, Opa, and Mother, um, and to anyone who had the absolute pleasure and honour of knowing my uncle, I really wish that I could be there with you today, um, but know that even from halfway across the world, I share in your grief and wish that I could be there to hold your hands and just to have this moment with you. I hope that you'll find peace and happiness and that you'll rely on those who share our grief. All right, let's start. It's no secret that when I was a child, I absolutely idolized my uncle. On the farm, I'd follow him around like a little puppy. And growing up, I never really thought about, you know, why that was. What was it about my uncle, my uncle that just attracted people to him, that just brought them to him. And over the last few days, I've, I've really been thinking about this. Um, and I think it's because my uncle was just this absolute source of life. And, you know, even as a child, I could sense that about him. I think that everyone can agree that you knew when Peter was in the room. Uh, you probably heard him <laughs> before you saw him. Uh, but more than that, you could feel him in the room around you. You could see it in the laughter of the people who surrounded him. Just that that sense of life that he provided to people. Um, and that's something I will never forget. A true inspiration to me. Something I'd like to continue to strive for in the memory of him. To just be a source of life, to bring people together, to just create communities and families and friendships. Um, I've often heard people say a celebration of life when referring to events like this. And with Peter, I finally understand why. Uh, that's because he truly lived. And when you're around him, you couldn't help but feel alive. And so through the precious memories that live within us, we can continue to feel that life, that presence, and then just think of the man who so beautifully embodied all of it. <sighs> oh no, Peter. Ik ben ze kon door geweest het om je tot ziens te zijn. Om jou aan vast te houden en jou familie zijn aan vast te houden wat voor jou zo belangrijk was. Ik weet ons zal mekaar weer een dag zien. En wanneer die tijd kom, ik dan gaan al bij je weer om te praten. Hopelijk oor een glas goeie wijn. Um, so to dan, rissag, and weet jy lewe aan met ons. Thank you very much. My tears and love are with all of you. So let's celebrate the love. And let's celebrate the life of a man who truly lived. 
Hi everyone, um, I'm Amy, Emma's sister, um, Francois's sister-in-law. Um, I first met Francois when I must have been about eight, seven or eight. Um, and I remember him coming over with Emma when they first met and doing flips in our front garden and teaching everyone how to do all these gymnastic things that no one could do. Um, my favourite memory, I think, was when my sister and Francois and I went skiing down in Mount Ropehu in New Zealand um, and we were all squished into a little MG. I was stuck in the back where there is not really a seat, but we, we squished me in there and the three of us went on a road tour. Um, I wish more than anything that I could be there for you, Em, and Kwasi, Jack and Rosie. I can't imagine what it's like. Um, Manakees and Charlotte, I'm sending my love. I'm really, really sorry about what's happened and all I can do is, um, is not, I can't even imagine how it is. Uh, I, I love you all and I'm here for anyone if they need me. I'm Duncan, Emma's father, and Francois was my son-in-law. On behalf of our New Zealand families, I'd like to say how deeply saddened we are at Francois's passing. We always enjoyed Francois's company. He was a sportsman, great father, great host, and an astute businessman. He always encouraged his family in what they were trying to do. His favourite saying that I remember always was, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. He loved Emma, his children, and was extremely proud of them all. Francois may not be with us now, but we will always keep him with us in our memories. Farewell, my friend. Rest in peace. Francois, Francesco, my friend, um, I would like to, to say to you goodbye. Uh, there are so so many things I would like to, to say to you, uh, but the most important thing, man, is uh, that I would like to, 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 to say you to, uh, thank you very much for, for allowing me being part of, of your life, of your life dream. Uh, thank you very much for for being my my friend, my tennis partner, my my gym colleague, and uh, for for sharing all those good moments uh, with me. Mm, I am very very proud of of being your friend. I am very proud of of um, seeing you as the as the owner uh, of of Nobles Fontaine Green Farm, our our project. Seeing you as the individual owner, which is something I will, I think, uh, for me at least, uh, it is uh, unique. Uh, not not being a corporation, just being an individual owning your own your own wind farm, is a is a massive uh, achievement, uh, which will be remembered, and I think you will be also remembered as 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 a pioneer in the renewable energy industry in uh, South Africa, uh, for for sure. Um, I will always remember how uh, how hard you you work for to, for this, and um, and all the good moments that we've 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 shared uh, at work, and the lessons that you that you've uh, given me about about life, you know, um, like a big brother, you know. I will always remember that you always said that life is too short and too precious, and that we must take a small bite of, of, of a very little piece of this life. I think I think that this was, um, I remember when you told me that uh, when one of the first times we met uh, back in back in Cadiz, back in uh, Madrid in 2011. Um, thank you very much, my friend. Uh, um, you should have improved your, your tennis. Eh? Uh, but uh, I think we have um, we had uh, a lot of fun. Eh? Uh, for me, playing with you as my as my partner was one of the the, the best things in in my life. You know, it was so much fun. So I, I really enjoyed. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for those good moments and, and for that fun. You know, um, 
I'm going to miss you a lot. I'm going to miss you really, really. But um, me and, uh, and also my family, Mercedes and the kids, we, we will never forget you. Uh, you are part of our lives. You are an important uh, person in our lives. And uh, so please uh, keep an eye on me and, and my family and kids. Uh, keep an eye on us from up there, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, farewell, Francesco. I will always love you. Hi, Jelle. Is it special for Pitti's begrafenis? Dus een boom langs de rivier met zijn wortels bij het diep gegrond. Bij die wind is zijn takken in het maak mij hard gezond. Die die reflectie van die water zien ik tranen op mij gezicht. En jij in mijn gedachten schrijf ik jou. Saam, I love you, what he for was real. Je praat de ander taal, je zei de laatste maal, jij weet. Toen verschiet een ster, verras ik dal, ik vergeet. Halleluja, en ik zie weer jouw gezicht. En ik zie jou weer alsof jij hier langs mij staat. Ons praat weer over ons waardes voordat jij moet gaan. En ik zie nou waar jij zit en die engelen wat om jou dan. Allemaal hier op aarde wat jou ken mis nog een kans Om met jou te gesels en vir jou dalk iets te vraag Hoe gaan het met jou en of jy jou nog gedraag Al die goeie tye saam, I love you, oor die foon was reel Ander taal, jy sê die laaste maal, jy weet Toe verskiet een ster Verras ek dal, ek vergeet Halleluja, en ek sien weer jou gezicht Halleluja, hierdie is my hartsgedicht En ek sien Weer asof jy hier langs my staan Ons praat weer oor ons waardes Voordat jy moet gaan Sorry, I have a lot of thank yous to say Today, gosh, after a horrible week There's always possible thanks to Kim Kim Malk, thank you so much for being there with us and thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for organising the food, even though your stomach might have, you know. <laughs> um, Anka, thank you so much for the beautiful flowers. It's absolutely beautiful. exquisite and Francois would have loved it so much. Tanya Golding, I don't know where you are, I can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Tanya, thank you so much for organising the booze, because <laughs> we're going to need it. Soothing. <laughs> soothing. Um, Ollie, thank you so much for the catering. And Danny, thank you so much for the catering. And on, a part of our, um, from our family, Jennifer, we just... Jennifer, oh, the candles. Jennifer Clayton, thank you so much for the frames and the beautiful candles and everything. You guys have made a hard time um, a breeze. <laughs> Um, but I'd also like to thank everyone for the support over the past three months. Um, we love you all so much and we appreciate everything. Um, but let's celebrate his life. Happy birthday, 48. <laughs> <laughs>
I just wanted to end off with 58. He's 58. He's 58. <laughs> Friday the 13th, the Britney Spears conservative shift ended. Just saying. It's quite a good luck number. Um, I just wanted to end with saying uh, what from one of his favorite bands that he used to listen driving up to Paul with his mum from ABBA. Chikatito, you and I know, how the heartaches come and they go and the scars they're leaving. You'll be dancing once again and the pain has ended. You will have no time for grieving. Chikatito, you and I cry, but the sun is still in the sky and shining above you. Let me hear you sing once more, like you did before. Sing a new song, Chikatito. There you go. Try once more, like you did before. Sing a new song, Chikatito.